Hey everybody, Linda Bean from the Kellyanne Dolan Memorial Fund on our Shining a Light segment. Um, would love to welcome our guests today, um, Danielle and Scott Griffith. Hi. How are you doing? Good, how are you? Good, good. And their beautiful 12-year-old daughter, Chloe, about to be 13. Um, we're gonna kind of talk about more of a serious topic today um influenced by the current state of our world and the pandemic we hear so much about what back to school has been like um, for families and the stressors in juggling work schedules and all of a sudden becoming educators and it being kind of a 24 7 role but we want to highlight today really what it means and how it's magnified for a family that has two children um, and one that has special needs. So Danielle and Scott, if you would not mind telling me, tell me a little bit about Chloe, um, what a typical day looked like before the pandemic and what it looks like now. Go ahead. You go ahead. So Chloe uh, attends the Widener School in Philadelphia, which is uh, part of the school district of Philadelphia. Uh, it's located at Broad and Olney, right behind uh, Girls High School. Okay. And uh, pre-pandemic, Chloe would have gone to school five days a week. Uh, she's transported to school by school bus, um, which is a big part of her uh, routine. And then um, she would attend school, uh, have uh, individual classes as well as group classes with other children in the school um, that are sort of, it's somewhat age appropriate, but it's also somewhat uh, uh, driven by need. Uh, and whether that's intellectual or physical or emotional, whatever it happens to be. Um, and uh, like I say, that's five days a week. And she would also receive individualized uh, therapies, be they speech therapy or physical therapy or occupational therapy. She did swimming. Uh, things like that. Okay. And also, after school, uh, four days a week, a therapist would come and do ABA therapy with her. And the other day, she would go to horseback riding. Okay. Danielle, can you just, um, for our general audience, ABA, what, what's that about? Um, what does that mean? It is um, a therapy where it's individual, so it's a therapist and Chloe. And we actually had our therapist for five years. Right now, we don't have her. Um, and they would, you know, it, you learn by modeling. So she would sit and work with her with patience and modeling. Chloe learned how to eat by herself, drink by herself, um, stop hitting. Um, Chloe has a rare chromosomal abnormality and there's no uh, name for it. So we sort of are learning as we go with her. Uh, and this therapy actually uh, worked for her the best out of all of them, along with the horseback riding. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we're going to fast forward now, you know, seven months into um, our, our new normal and her, you know, really being out of school for six months. Mm -hmm. um, what has that meant for you as a family? What, what kind of challenges, what does day to day look like for the family? So we try our best to split it up with our work schedules. Um, you know, so if, you know, Scott has a deposition, then I do a lot of the one on one stuff. If I have a work commitment that I need to be, um, you know, focused on completely, and he takes it. So we try to split up because she has um, now she does not go to school and does not have ABA. And we just got the horseback riding added back uh, starting oh, awesome. week, starting, I think, tomorrow, starting tomorrow. And um, we're just figuring out like the whole schedule with our one-on-ones. So she does a morning meeting for 15 minutes in the morning and then an individual at around 1240. And then there are group classes in the afternoon, but obviously, you know, someone has to be seated near her. So she can't um, be left alone. Sure. And go ahead, Scott. What I was gonna say was you can see in some of the pictures that she has online classes, um, which I think is probably now the norm for all of the students in the Philadelphia School District. The unfortunate 
uh, part of uh, the plan that was put into place by the school district is simply that it didn't account for um, children with severe special needs. Um, and uh, it didn't account for the children that um, cannot really uh, absorb um, online services yeah. Um, yeah. that are more face-to-face, uh, -face, um, that learn face-to-face, -face, that learn uh, through the sort of symmetry of touching someone, yeah. uh, of, of, uh, of having that um, having that face-to-face -face communication. Um, it is very difficult, I think, for a child who um, communicates uh, in that format, the way you see Chloe now, um, to try to uh, mm -hmm. assimilate to having to see somebody on a computer screen, um, yeah. because that's not something that is normal in any way for any child, let alone for a child who has severe intellectual disabilities. You kind of read my mind because, you know, of many of the things that I've read, the first thing that's listed is the increase in screen time and the lack of sensory integration um, and and their social time with, you know, with their buddies. Um, you know, full disclosure, you know, Danielle is our phenomenal program director for the Kellyanne Dolan Memorial Fund, has been there, you know, 10 years. You guys, you know, juggle uh, life as a family um, extremely well. Um, but we know really the loss of um, those supports. And you're also hyper focused, I would imagine, on keeping Chloe healthy and safe because some of the complications that could arise. And Danielle, as you mentioned, you know, not really knowing because this is an undefined chromosomal abnormality, there are things that crop up that a doctor may not have been anticipating. So talk about quarantine for, for a family, right? Chloe's not been out much in seven months, right? Right, she doesn't talk. So if there's like an ache or a pain or she's getting sick, you don't know the start of it. So it's tough. I mean, I deal with it with a lot of humor. I think we both deal with it with a lot of humor. Um, but, you know, sometimes you realize she's sick and it's, you know, a little too late. Yeah. You know, we've ended up in the hospital with her. And so we're pretty careful with her. However, I would send her back to school because I trust the teachers at Widener and the staff at Widener, they're amazing. They're doing the best they can, you know, over the Google Meets. They're jumping up and down and singing and they're doing the best they can, but stuff. But we know for the average family, you know, you have the resources and the means to access mm -hmm. the adaptive equipment mm -hmm. to help her continue to grow and thrive and kind of supplement that gap. I mean, yeah. as parents, you were supplementing it anytime there wasn't a therapist or yeah. on the weekends anyway. Yep. But geez, what does that mean for, we know during the pandemic, many people have been furloughed mm -hmm. um, because of having the demands of the care of a special needs, one has to voluntarily quit their job. So their income has been diminished. You know, yes. what, what do they do? Do you have any suggestions um, so that all the gains are not lost um, on a fixed budget. Anything you can suggest? I mean, well, I think I, I think one of the main pieces that we've sort of taken from this over the course of the last six months, but also sort of um, you know over the course of the last twelve years, is that is is that the communication that you have with any of the providers that you have or had um, is something that is is necessary and it's and, and, and it's it's almost mandatory in a way um, i think that you have to be uh, the squeaky wheel um, because otherwise uh, you sort of get lost in the in the shuffle and i think that you know everyone in this pandemic is certainly overwhelmed whether that's a a city agency, a county agency, a provider, whomever it happens to be. But the harsh reality of that is, is that um, trying to get to be as close to first in line is where you want to try to be. And the only way to do that 
is to keep those lines of communication open with the providers. And whether that is the teacher, whether that's the therapist at the school or the person who does the physical therapy or occupational therapy or whatever it is, whether it's the nurse, whether it's the hospital, you know, Children's Hospital of Philadelphia or St. Chris, Regional Hospital in the Moors, um, and and then you know deal with whomever the uh, social work people are um, that are, are are there to assist you in providing service. Um, and, and you kind of approach it. You kind of approach it as you know Chloe has a multidisciplinary team, and you both are her advocates twenty four seven because yeah, I think that's right. You know, it just doesn't land on your your doorstep. Um, you have to be, you know, persistent. And whether you are at the poverty line, working class, or a middle class family, it's the same struggles to get access to what a child of special needs by, by law is really entitled to, but it doesn't come easy. Well, everything that they're entitled to by law, they're not getting right now. They're just not getting. So we're all trying to do the best we can. And as a family, you have to definitely kind of schedule things out, keep the lines of communication open, uh, you know, because it can get, it can be a struggle. It can really be a struggle. Everybody's trying to keep their jobs, get their kids educated and be safe. Right, as well as, you know, you know, have a little bit of a healthy life apart from, yeah. you know, work, school, Mm -hmm. And um, so, you know, tell me about that. Do you guys trade off where you, you get some time away from it all to uh, oh, yeah. keep your sanity? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So I think Scott's sanity would be, uh, we have a son who's 14, taking him to baseball, um, going out and hitting balls and doing that kind of stuff, work around the house. We take the dog for walks, you know, every day and every night. We say to each other, well, what do you have? What do you have to just make sure that everything gets done? That kind of well, stuff. And it seems like, uh, you know, Chloe inherited certainly her mother's sense of humor. Uh, <laughs> I think it was shared with us last week, a, a real funny picture of her. I don't know if we have it today, but it, I think no, she was a little, <laughs> little annoyed that she, you know, nobody puts baby in the corner and she decided yep. to tank her TV. <laughs> and smash it. <laughs> so we set up an area for her that actually has her computer hooked to a TV so she can see her teachers and her aides more, you know, human size, bigger, not on the Chromebook. And she was annoyed because she can't be with them and she smashed the TV. I can share the picture later. Yeah. Kind of funny. It is. Funny. And the TV survived. It's amazing. It's they amazing. Both survived. Yep. Nobody got hurt, uh, including the TV. Just a little scratch. <laughs> you know, I also I know no. Um, Chloe does not have speech, um, but I've had the the privilege of being in her company several times, and and she yeah we know it's all up there because she's <laughs> she's brilliant. She has an incredible sense of humor, but. You know, one of the things I observed during this pandemic, she, she and Carlos, the, the beloved family pet, were, were not homies from the, the start. No, um, they were not. And I think that's been one of the, the beautiful things that's come out of this time. Tell me about their relationship. So they have bonded, sometimes against all of us. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they basically moved together. He sits through all her classes with her. Um, to do this, he actually was fighting to get up so he could be with her. Um, you know, it's very, very sweet. They've really become very close. So it's nice because at first, when we got him a year ago, they would fight <laughs> for attention. So it was like having a newborn in the house, which I guess we kind of did. It's just a dog. Yeah. But now they are just total buds. That's and the neat, neat thing that's come out of that. Well. A couple of things. I wanted to really thank you both for being so open and sharing um, your story, your your tip, um, the challenges, but you know how you're getting up, putting one foot on the ground, and moving forward every day, so this little girl can continue to grow and thrive. Um, at the Dolan Fund, we we like to um, offer resources to our families, 
And I just want to point you to dolanfund.org because we are talking about schooling of a special needs child um, admits COVID. So if you hop to our website, we've got a number of different tips to consider um, and resources if you're parenting a special needs child. And gosh, you're just looking for some help out there. Where can you turn? And especially with the return back to school, some precautions in terms and, of... Uh, my email is on that. If anybody has any questions or needs any help with resources as a professional and as a parent, you know, of course, I'll do anything I can to help anybody. Awesome. Awesome. Um, thanks for being our guest today, Chloe. Hey, thanks for being the star hey, of the show. Can you say bye? Keep everybody in line and you guys have a fabulous day. You too. Take, Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.